When you're singing that from your heart, that's what you're declaring today. You know, of all the things, even good things by our standards don't compare to the goodness of God. You can't overbelieve that because even the psalmist said, I would have fainted. I wouldn't have made it if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of God here in the land of the living. <laughs> I tell you, when you're singing that, faith cometh by hearing that. And he said, I wouldn't have made it if I hadn't had faith enough to believe because the devil is a blasphemer. How many know that? You know, we may not repeat what he says to our minds, but the very same thing he said in the beginning when he came to Eve. Oh, so God's up to no good. That's what he was saying, right? So he told you not to take from this fruit here. Well, I'll tell you what, he's up to no good. He don't want you to have this. He don't want you to have that. I may know the devil hasn't stopped lying. He hasn't stopped blaspheming. He hasn't stopped telling people in temptation, there's something better than going to church. There's something, oh, don't go over there. They look, I got something good here. There's something better than hearing God. There's something better than serving God. He's always blaspheming. He's always lying every day. Every day. Therefore, when you're singing about the goodness of God, you're just putting him in his place. Hallelujah. You're just saying it didn't work. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Wave to somebody or shake somebody's hand or give somebody a fist bump or give somebody a high five. Let them know you're glad we're here because the more we are, the stronger we get. One can set a thousand to flight, two can set 10,000 to flight, 50 can set, I, I don't know, I'm not good at, uh, at, at what do you call the new stuff where they mix the alphabet with the arithmetic? Algebra and calculus, amen. But you that you you that uh, do uh, did go to college and and learned algebra and calculus and all that, you know, if, if two can set ten thousand, when one can set a thousand, it looks like tenfold. Then what can a hundred do? Come on, calculus, no, you ain't gonna get it, guys. Can't count that good, right? That's how good God is. And that's how good he gets when we get together. You lose count. Praise be to Jesus. Well, we got a lot of people going to Sunday school, the children, the teachers, but we got a, we meet a good quota here. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Are you all ready to get into the word of God? Man, I'm glad you showed up to receive from the word of the Lord. We just need it every time, every time. We just need it. Hebrews 4.12, a very well-known scripture. We're going to start there. In Hebrews 4, verse 12, hallelujah. And if you're slow to the draw, they got it up there for you, right? For the word of God is living and active. That means it's alive and it's powerful. Sharper than any, it's in the NIV I'm reading from. Sharper than any double-edged sword, because that was a weapon of the day. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Amen. How many wanted to go that deep? Amen. All right, all right, we're getting ready then. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight anyway. I put the anyway in there myself. Everything is uncovered. Everything, you see? Everything is uncovered and laid before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Right? Ignorance is going to be no excuse. Therefore, since we have, therefore, since we have a great high priest 
who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. And in the King James, it says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Amen. For we do not have, verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Make no mistake about it. I'm surprised the question some Christians ask still because they go see dumb movies or read dumb comments. Amen. Read the Bible. Amen. Let it tell you. Yet was without sin. Amen. Questions like, well, did Jesus have a girlfriend? Oh, my gosh. You know. Where did you get that from? Is it in the Bible? Is it in the Word of God? Lying there with strategy. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Wow. So it's still a throne of grace with confidence. That we may receive mercy. Oh, we still need mercy. Amen. And find grace to help. Anybody need some help on something? You'll find grace to help in our time of need. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'm going to be speaking today about holding on to our profession of faith. Because that's what the scripture said. Uh, we began reading, you know, by the word of God being powerful, alive, active, and, and so forth. But then it said, but then, then let us hold fast to our profession of faith. And that's what I'm going to talk about, holding on to our profession of faith. Amen. Because how many know that the thief comes to steal? And you know what he comes to steal? Jesus said he comes to steal, by the way. We'll just, we'll just do, do step one today. Amen. But Jesus did say he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy but let's stop him at step one. How many like to stop him at step one instead of waiting for step two? Huh? Well, that's where we stop him in step one. Amen? He comes to steal. What does he come to steal? You know what he comes to steal? Everything that the word of God tells us to hold on to. Amen? And today we just talk about this one thing. But Jesus said, behold, I come quickly, right? And he said, hold on to what you have. Well, what do I have? You see, it's already gone. <laughs> if that's what you're asking yourself, you're getting to the right place. Please don't run. Or tie yourself down to the chair. Amen? Well, I don't have much. Well, you, you just, the Lord just said, hold on to what you have. Right? That means, that means if, you, if you're thinking about what do I have, well, you came to the right place. If you didn't have nothing, you're going to have something. The number one thing you're going to get here right now is the faith that comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But after you leave, you're going to have to hold on to it because the thief comes to steal. The scripture says, out of the mouth of Jesus, Satan cometh immediately to steal the word of God. As he was illustrating that in the form that the word was a seed that comes to bring forth the will of God. A lot of people would pray, or oh, it wasn't really prayer, it was something religious, let thy will be done, but they'd never hold on to any seed. Amen? Amen. So how in the world is the will of God going to be done? When everything that comes from heaven comes in the seed form of the word of God. And Jesus said, as soon as I plant the word, Satan comes immediately to steal the word through distractions, through adversities, through, through preoccupations, you know, through all these persecutions. Whatever he can use to steal, he'll use it. He comes to steal. You know? Don't worry. I mean, we, we, we lock things down so they won't steal them, and that's a good idea. Lock your car. Anybody leave your keys in your car? Go out there and get them right now. <laughs> right? Leave your door open. No, don't do that. Amen? But, but, but that's the least of it. That's not what the, where the great treasure is. The devil's not after your hubcaps or your stereo. He's after your faith. 
He's after your profession of faith. That's what we're talking here in the scriptures about holding on to our profession of faith. Our profession, mind you, mind you, you also know in other terms what a profession is, right? If you're a professional truck driver, that's your profession, right? That means you, you do that for a living. That's what you're a professional. You don't want to call yourself up. I'm a professional driver. You could be a taxi driver, and you're a professional driver. Because that's what you, you know, do for a living, right? Call your profession. Whether you're a NASCAR driver or whether you're a taxi driver, your profession or a truck driver is driving. Therefore, you can call yourself a professional driver because what you do pays your bills, right? Well, here in this profession, our faith is necessary because this is a profession of every believer. In other words, we got to sharpen up and be professionals in it, right? The taxi driver, he wants to pay his bills real good. He becomes better at it, right? The truck driver does too. And of course, the race car driver that receives all the glamour, of course he does too, right? So if our profession is a profession of faith, we ought to sharpen ourselves, you know, to be the best that we can. Because of all the professions, of all the things we do for a living, amen, this is the profession that God has given us all as believers, the profession of faith. Amen. Wow, it's a work of faith. You see, our profession is to, <clears throat> we're left here to fulfill the word of God. Amen. You know, and we will fulfill the word of God. Yes. We're left here once we're saved, once we come out of Egypt. But how many know that when the Lord pulled them out of Egypt, he wasn't through performing his word. He said, I'm going to pull you out of Egypt with signs, wonders, miracles, the opening of the Red Sea. He brought them out of Egypt. But they were called into a profession of believing God and of speaking the word of God. You know, they were, they were, they were still. And like we're here, we're here to fulfill the word of God. And what was the word of God? I'm going to take you to a land of milk and honey, of abundance, of blessing. You're going to possess that land. You're not going to be slaves anymore. Hallelujah. You're going to be the head and you're not going to be the tail. You're going to be above and you're not going to be beneath. You're going to be blessed coming in. You're going to be blessed going out. That's what the Lord's word was for them. Do you understand? And they were called to profess the word of the Lord and be professionals in the fulfillment of the word of God for their lives. Amen. Were you born knowing how to drive? No, you had to practice. Right? You had to be steadfast. Amen. Our, our, our first vehicle I got into, I mean, back then they were all standard and they all had the granny gear. And in my family, they were all pickup trucks. I think a while put me in one, man, that thing bucked like a Bronco. I said, man, I'm trying to learn how to drive, not to ride on a wild horse, amen? amen. Uh, but I went and got back in there when nobody was watching. And I said, here's a key. They would leave the key in the cars back then. When I cranked it, that thing leaped up like a Bronco again, man. It almost hit the, the building in front because I didn't know how to push the clutch and hold the brake. The next time I went... I pushed the clutch, but the darn thing rolled into the street then. You know? All of that. But what? I kept going back. I kept going back. You know? Because I knew I was going to learn how to drive no matter what, one way or the other. Amen? Well, in the Word of God and in your profession, I'll tell you what, maybe there's somebody here that don't drive a vehicle. Amen? You can get by without that. But you're not going to get by without learning how to profess the word of God. As a Christian, delivered from Egypt, you'll wind up back in Egypt. You will wind up back in Egypt. And some people, they, they don't want to hold on to their profession. They got a revolving door in, in Egypt. They, they installed one over the Red Sea. 
Not going to do that. Because you can go get into the promised land. We're going to get into the manifest promises of God. So we learn how to hold on to the profession of the word of God. Once we're saved from the Egypt of our sins, we're either a good example of this faith or we're a bad example of this faith. Right? The same way you're a good driver or you're a bad driver. Right? I'm using that as an example, but it goes everywhere. But the most important place is in the word, that we're here to fulfill the word of our God. That's why they were still his people. They were going to cross the desert, and God's word was going to be fulfilled in a fullness of their blessing. Yeah, you understand? But along the way, there were going to be adversities. There were going to be divergence. There were going to be doubts. There were going to be all of these things. That in the midst of those things, they had to hold on to their profession of faith and not let the devil hijack that. Are right. oh, y'all hearing this today? Now, 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 now I'm, not, I'm not taking this out of context because 1 Corinthians 10, 11, when it's talking about what happened to them in the desert and how they became a good example of a bad example. Right? Are oh, y'all hearing that? They became a good example of a bad example because you will be an example. Amen. You will be an example. When you're brought out of Egypt because you are left here to fulfill the word of God, you will be an example of good and how to do it, or you will be an example of bad and how not to do it. I once told a very bitter, angry preacher and... Stubborn, unhumbling preacher, you know, I, I tell him, I've learned a lot from you. And he said, that's right. And you, you should learn more from me. Well, I said, yes, I'm learning right now. I'm learning what not to do. Amen. Amen. So you all see all kinds of Christians. Don't just, oh, well, he did it. Okay, you want to do it too. You go get the same thing. You know, oh, well, they do that. Oh, they, how come they won't then tell them or whatever? You just, I mean, everybody's going to reap what they sow. Y'all hearing this? Because everybody left here to fulfill the word of the Lord. And, and I was going to put it up there. They probably did 1 Corinthians 10, 11. As it talked about those things, it says, and it doesn't only say it once. It, it says it more than once in that context of verses there. It says, now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition unto whom the ends of the world are to come. That means this go apply to the end of the world. Are y'all hearing this? I mean, this doesn't become obsolete and it's not from your antiquated writings. This is true to the end. We can still look to the example of those that went before us. And in, and in that uh, context of verses there, it was all their bad examples. Wow. So they were still an example of the word of God. Because they were here and they were going to manifest the word of God. God desired that they <clears throat> manifest it <clears throat> in his promises being fulfilled. Right? I, I, I'd rather have the promises of God fulfilled. I'd rather have household salvation. I'd rather have health and healing. I'd rather have prosperity. Amen. But if I want to be a bad example, I'll just do the wrong thing, and the word of God will still manifest, and, and I'll become a good example of a bad example, which I don't want to. Amen? Amen? I'd rather reap the good. Amen. I'd rather drink the sweet. Amen. The Bible says eat the fat. I try to slow down on that, but <laughs> it's because I'm blessed. Amen? These things happen for our examples. Is there in the New Testament? And that was written 2,000 years ago. But it says it's for the end, until the end of the world. Amen. It ain't never going to change. Wow, 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 wow. 
You see, you see the example of them, and I, I'm talking about, you know, we're going to fulfill the word of God. Look, look at Numbers 14, 6. I, I put a, about five verses from some of their experiences, and some that did good, some that did bad. Some, uh, you all remember the 12 spies that were sent into the promised land that God had promised was theirs to inherit, right? And, and he allowed them to go in and spy the land, and they sent you know, 12 uh, uh, spies, uh, one for every tribe. And they, they went into the Canaan land. And when they went in there, they saw, uh, uh, just like God said, it, it was a rich land. They, they, they found a, a, a vineyard and, and, and they pulled a, 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 a bunch of uh, grapes, you know, a, a cluster of grapes, pardon me. And, and the cluster was so big and the grapes were so big that they had to get two men with a stick to carry it, to bring it back for evidence. I believe those two men were quite likely uh, Joshua and Caleb, amen? And I picture them in my mind all the time, you know, hauling back the evidence. It's true, the blessing's there, guys, amen? But the other guys, they, they, they didn't bring back a, a good witness. They, they brought back a, a, a witness of what they saw with their eyes and, and, and the adversities and the cities that had walls and, and, and the men that were big and, and armies, and, and, and they came back with a very bad report, right? They looked for the wrong thing, because if you look for the wrong thing, you will always find it. If you set your eyes on what's going to fill you with doubt and unbelief, the devil's got you going, Amen. Uh, he'll bombard your mind, he'll send you a letter, he'll send you a phone call, whatever he can. A lot of times when the blessing is right there at the border, hallelujah, the devil tries his best to, to steal the profession of your faith, hallelujah, to get in there with doubt and unbelief and all kinds of things, and he will steal it and he will use people to try to steal your blessing too. Hopefully you're not one of them, and hopefully you're not a victim either. Amen. We got to be like Joshua and, and, and Caleb, because there it says Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, which were of them that searched the land. When the guys were talking about their bad reports, they said, we can't take that. Let's get another captain. This Moses is going to get us killed. I elaborate, but they did say along those lines. He said, let's get another captain and let's go back to Egypt. That's it. Their profession was hijacked. The devil took over their profession. Let's go back to Egypt. These guys are going to get us killed. Did, did God, was the promise in the word of God say, I'm going to take you into Canaan land so I can get you killed? No, I'm going to take you into the promised land so you can inherit the land. So they, they, don't, they don't have the word of God in their profession any longer. They don't have the word that is alive and powerful anymore. They don't have the promises of God. And they, they got good excuses because they're seeing, but they're seeing with their eyes and they're not seeing with their heart and they're not hearing what God said anymore. They're not believing what God said anymore. That's where the enemy wants to get all of us. How many understand? And we're not going to get there because we're called to hold on. To what we have received of the Lord. People can receive of the, of the Lord here tremendously and the devil can be waiting at the door. Amen. So steal what you receive here. And at that point it's up to you to hold on to your profession of faith. Are y'all hearing this? Because you gave the devil a long time to mess up a lot of things. You got to give the word of God some time to bring forth. Are y'all hearing this? So they spoke, and Joshua and Caleb had searched, the, that had searched the land. They rent their clothes, and then they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. Just like God said it was, right? If the Lord delight in us, Amen. How many, <clears throat> how many know that your faith brings delight to the Lord? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your faith brings delight to even a mere pastor like me, you being here by faith brings joy or, or, or you can bring grief, you know. Sometimes the people that need it the most, they 
don't come to receive, you know, it grieves me, but I keep on going, I ain't going to set my eyes on that. I, I got a responsibility to bless those that come to receive. Bless those that are listening in there right now that weren't able to come, but hey, we try to get it out there, get that, the message out there, the faith out there, you know, the replenishing of everything that the enemy tries to drain out of you throughout the week, hallelujah, is necessary to come together and fill your tank Back up, get under the spout where the glory of God is coming out. Glory be to God. Because he, 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 he's never struggling, he's never raising the price on, of what he wants to fill you with. It's all paid for by Jesus. No reason, no reason to be running on empty. And ain't no reason to be running on a half or a three-quarter tank. Amen. Ain't, ain't, ain't even to, a reason to even be satisfied with just being on full. Amen. I'll tell you, God's measure, hallelujah, it's an overflowing, it's an overrunning, it's a springing forth measure. It's coming out of your mouth. Amen. How do you think this preacher keeps on preaching? He's got to keep filling. I filled enough in... In, in, in 84, 85, 86, when I went to Bible school, no, sir, I need to fill up in 87. I need to fill up in, in 2020, 21, and 22, whatever comes, you know, every day I need to fill it up again, hallelujah, because it's always coming forth. I'm, I'm either going to fill up with the word of God and faith, or I'm going to fill up with stuff out there that the giants have and the devil has and the kingdom of darkness has. I, I just rather get filled with the light of God until... Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to measure it like like we measure. You know, we measure and we fill to the brim or just a little lower. But if God were to fill this cup, it'd still be running all over the place. And in the spirit, it's still running all over the place. My cup runneth over. Hallelujah. That's what the psalmist said. He didn't say you fill my cup, Lord. Oh, it's just enough. No, he said my cup it runneth over. Glory be to God. We're called to fulfill the word of God. Amen. Amen. Fulfill and run over in the name of Jesus. Amen. So they said it's a good land. And if the Lord delight in us, because faith pleases God, Amen. if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land. Yeah. I got something. I'm telling you, I got something that brings delight to the Lord. Yeah. It's called faith. Without it, you can't delight the Lord. Without it, you can't please God. But if you believe in God, the scripture says that if you believe in God, you must believe that he is God. That means that circumstance is not God. The adversity is not God. The doctor's prognosis is not God. I believe that he is God. That's Hebrews 11, 6, by the way. If you believe in him, nothing's going to take his place. He is God. You know, sometimes people talk like God. I've had doctors a couple of times in my life, you know, try to guarantee me disaster. And a lot of times the doctors hold back, but some of their helpers, they're very helpful to the devil, amen. I'm sorry, I don't mean anything bad against the medical profession. I, I get checked, I get, I go spy the land, amen, and all that. But some people really go overboard. I've had to ask them for, for my lab so I can read them myself. And guess what? God was right and they were wrong. Amen? And you got to be respectful. I got to put that in there. Be respectful to the people. I was not disrespectful. I just said, send me the lab. Well, they found it. You're going to have the treatment, blah, blah, blah. Okay, send me the labs. I want to see where, where you're getting all this from. And I looked at it and it's easily corrected. I lose a few pounds and stop eating as bad as I'm eating. And I don't need no medication. And guess what? My faith in God and, and works that supported that faith in my life, I, I, I'm on no medication whatsoever at all. Amen. <clears throat> and I go back and get checked. Well, then we're going to have to run more tests. Absolutely, go ahead and run more tests. You're going to find out. I had the doctor tell me, oh, yeah, you got a point there. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a professional. 
in the medical field. I'm a professional in the word of God. But I'm telling you, hold on to your profession because you're here to fulfill the word and its promises. And then be a, a, a good example of, of, of a good God. <clears throat> Amen. So here, the, if the Lord delight in us, verse 8 again, then he will bring us into this land, said Caleb and Joshua, which floweth with milk and honey, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. The Lord is with us. How many know the Lord is with you? If he wasn't with you, he would have left you out there. If the Lord wasn't with you, you'd be, you, oh, my, I better not say too much. But some of you have been different places that are not a good place. Amen. Some of you be rotting in jail. Some of you be dead. Some of you be in the hospital. Some of you wouldn't be even you anymore. Right? But the Lord is with us. That's why we made, what, if the only evidence you got is that, that you made it out of the bondage of sin and of Egypt. Hallelujah. That's enough to prove that the Lord is with you. It's good to testify, but don't look back too much. Amen. Keep your eye on the rear view. You're going to crash because your eyes weren't on the windshield of life. Are y'all hearing this? Some people just look back too much. Some people just glimpse back and keep on hammering forth. Amen. That's why people, I mean, God raises up people like Joyce Myers that went through yuck. Say yuck three times. I got that from Marilyn Hickey. Then. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah. She would say, say yuck three times. You think you went through yucky stuff. Your God raises an example. A good example. I mean, how to survive, not only survive, but flourish. Not only flourish, but overflow. Overflow. You know, people show up in courtrooms saying, well, my daddy, didn't uh, my home, what's that? Well, at the time, I didn't even have a house. I'd be sleeping in a truck or a car on top of a load of watermelons, you know? Well, my house, you know how it was. I didn't even have a house sometimes. Amen? Y'all hearing this? It don't matter. I, don't, I hardly say it. I don't live in it. It's where the Lord brought us forth. Now I have a house. And, and I have the house of the Lord. And I have another mansion being built right now. But not compared to any house I could have here. I'm just, I just threw that in there to say, you know, you can use your experiences to become a bad example. When God, God can't forgive excuses. We all got excuses. Well, guys, I know we don't have nobody born with a silver spoon in your mouth here in this place. That your parents were millionaires and they were the best parents of the year every year. No. We all, we all have. Things happen to us. But God raises up people like that. Amen. To show you that you ain't got no excuse. You just got to believe the word of God. It don't matter how big your giants were. It don't matter what happened to you in Egypt. I brought you out of Egypt. I opened the Red Sea. You got enough evidence that I'm good. Now you believe what I say is up ahead for you. Because if you don't, the devil will hijack your journey. And you will not fulfill my promises. But if the Lord delights in you, he will give you the land. And he will delight in you if you hold on to your profession of faith that we're talking about today. Because he said in verse 9, only rebel ye not against the Lord. Some people say, well, I, I don't rebel. Oh, no, I don't rebel. It, 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 it's like uh, Brother Louis was, was saying in the morning, you know, that that televangelist, he didn't lose his love for God. He lost the fear of God. And there's sometimes, sometimes we just thinking about ourselves and well, I don't really, I don't really want to have that much. I don't really want to do that much. Well, I'm not really a, a preacher. Well, I'm not really, you know, you know what? 
Stop thinking about you. The Lord says it's yours. You better claim it because he paid for it. How many ever take something because they paid for it? I said, I wasn't really looking for this, but well, I'll try to enjoy it because you paid so much for it. Amen. Right? So, so you try to use it. Somebody sacrificed for it. Well, that, that, that's, that's, that's a small thing. What the Lord paid for and has put in our lives are things that he knows we need. Amen. Callings, gifts that he knows we need. They're for our blessing. So, and, and as we take him and receive him and thank him for it and, and, and put him into place and, and, and hold on and retain what he has given us, it brings delight Amen. to the Lord. It brings delight. I've, I've had Christians say, well, I'm not going to backslide, but what about your children? I said, well, we haven't been to church, but I'm not going to backslide. Well, what about your grandchildren? Well, I'm not going to backslide. I know I'm, I know I'm going to hold on to my salvation. It's not like I'm going to go back to the world. Well, what about all those that the Lord has called you, you know, to be a blessing to? That's selfish. That's rebellion. But they don't know it. Here he says, Rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. But all the congregation bade, bade to stone them with stones. Guess what? But when you hold on to the profession of God, the Bible says, And the glory of the Lord, hallelujah. The glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will they uh, be here to believe me? They don't want to believe me. And, and, all, and for all the signs that, I, that I've shown among them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, Lord, the Lord expects you to believe in him. But sometimes we take all his blessings for granted. Or we don't even count them as blessings. You understand? One of the things about me, you know, experiencing by going to foreign countries sometimes, is I come back and, and, and I see how blessed we are. Yes. You know, and I still see people begging and living in the streets. I say, are you kidding me? In a land like this? But that's, that's, that's kind of the, the uh, ultimate, you know, Example of a people being surrounded by blessing in this country and still living like that. You don't know how many of those people would appreciate. That's why they're fighting to cross the border. Are you hearing this? Because there's people here in this country that they don't appreciate how God has blessed this land. Do you understand? You know, I, I believe it's the people that, that appreciate it what they have in this blessed land would we'll be thanking God for it. You know what? I mean, we'd, we'd have so much, we'd be sending stuff over there. You understand? Uh, the imbalance is much deeper than what any physical eye can see or any intellect can decipher. But the true balance comes in us holding on to what we have and practicing our profession. Are y'all hearing this? So, these people wouldn't believe in spite of all that they'd been shown, all that they'd been given. Were they still crossing a desert? Yeah. But God was raining manna upon them. God was bringing water from a rock for them. God was bringing central heat at night and central air in the daytime. With a cloud by day and a column of fire by night. In the middle of the desert. And that was only uh, uh, temporary while they got to the land that was flowing in overabundance. The manna represents you having enough to make it to the land. How many got enough to make it today? You made it here. Amen. Amen. Well, if, if it's not enough, there's more up ahead. You have to be faithful in the little, and the Bible says that God will put you over much. That's not my word. That's a promise of God. Hold on to that one, too. You see, you're here for the same reason Jesus, the Son of Man, came as a man. It's not just about what would Jesus do. It's how did Jesus do it. Amen? Got his example. Thank God he didn't just do it. He left us an example. 
the word came down from heaven. And the Bible says that the word became flesh in verse 14 of John 1. It said the word, hallelujah, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. What appeared? The glory. And the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Hallelujah. Why did the scripture open with saying, come to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Come and receive mercies. Come and receive grace to help. You know what that is? That's the word of God. But you know what that is? That's the word of God manifesting for you. And that's the word of God manifesting in you. And that's the word of God becoming flesh in you. Hallelujah. And that's why you're here to fulfill the word of the Lord. And the Bible says that when it was being manifested in Jesus, as he became flesh and dwelt among us, we saw him as the Son of God, full of grace, full of truth that came against every lie of the devil. That's what the scripture says. And it hasn't changed. The word of God still comes to manifest in your flesh, in your earthly life, because you're here to fulfill the word of God. Hallelujah. You're here so the word of God can find a good ground and bring forth a good blessing. Are y'all hearing this? Does the ground go through a storm? Yeah, but it just gets rain from it. Does, 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 does uh, ground go through thunder? Yeah, but when lightning strikes the ground, it just releases nitrogen and the seed explodes and begins to sprout forth. Amen. Does the ground go through a flood? Yeah, it does. Uh, uh, we're praying for rain and everything because the ground needs rain. Amen. But I'll tell you what, the rain ain't never stopped coming down right here in the house of the Lord. I know that for a fact because I come over here to get watered. Amen. When it's lightning and thunder, I want to get the water. Hallelujah. Because in the midst of everything that the enemy tries to scare you with or even intends for evil, God is there to work it about for good, hallelujah, for all those that love the Lord because you're here to fulfill the goodness of the word of God. But fulfill we will because we're already out of Egypt. An example we will be. If you see the preacher make a mistake, We'll say, well, that's a good example of a bad example. I'm not going to do that. Amen. Amen. I hope I'm never told what I had to tell that brother that time. I've learned. I've learned. I didn't tell him, but I was, that was what I was saying. I learned what not to do. Amen. You've not gotten very good results. The word of God wants to manifest. He wants to be fulfilled in you. The word that we open by saying, and the scripture said, it's alive, it's powerful. Amen. Continued on to say that we have Jesus, you know, that represents us and understands all our troubles, all our weaknesses. Because the devil come in here and he'll say, well, this is for the strongest Christian. No, it's, it's for the newest believer. It's for the unbeliever so you can believe today. No matter what, what level you are. Amen. It's for us all that are hearing the word of the Lord. Our profession is a profession of faith. A faith that became active the day we received Jesus. Right? Faith became active. Just like the word of God is alive and active. Faith became active and the word of God became active. And was there to I mean, it had begun in power, but it's meant to, to keep manifesting the power, the grace, the favor, the truth against every lie of the enemy. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. Amen. Our profession is a profession of faith. It became active in our lives when we got saved, and it, was, it must remain active in order that we may be able to see the goodness of God here in the land of the living. You understand? That's why the psalmist said in Psalm 27, he said, I had fainted. If I had not retained my faith, I, I, I elaborate, I would have passed out. I had fainted. 
unless I had believed to see, I'm believing to see the goodness of God, Amen. not only in heaven, but here in the land of the living. Amen. Oh, let that faith be installed in you. Amen. Because the psalmist said, I wouldn't have made it if I had not believed this way. You see, the people in the desert were, were, were supposed to maintain an active faith. Many times a guy that would say, I'm saved and I don't plan to backslide and I'm not going back, Pastor, don't worry. You know, he had a faith that was still in stage one. Amen? Still just salvation, which is good. Okay, we'll see you in heaven. There's a likelihood, I better not say nothing. <laughs> Amen? But the psalmist said it. I would have fainted. I wouldn't have made the, the full journey if I had not believed this way. So he's saying, this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that the enemy will try to make you faint and give up. But if you want to see the goodness of God, keep on believing and keep faith active. And faith that is active is a faith that cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. The life we live now, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. That's after they get saved, they keep living by faith. We walk by faith, right? A step after step after step after step. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 10, 38 says, now the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. But if any man draw back, like they drew back, like the ten spies and the followers they had, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not. Can you all can you put your name in there? We, this is part of the we. We are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. We're not here to draw back. We're here to go forth. Amen. And a going forth that is by faith and by believing God, a going forth that comes by us being fed in the word of God that because we don't generate our own faith. It is generated by the word of God and us holding on to the profession of the word of God that we are all called, all believers called, all Christians are called to fulfill. Amen. And so I'm also, it's not just so many confirmations in a negative way. Oh, brother, it's harder now that I'm a Christian. This didn't used to happen to me before. The thief is coming to steal, Jesus told you. Are y'all hearing this? I don't, I hope it, and I'll tell you what, if, if you get set on this course and, and, and the thief knows that he can't steal, you may not have to go through a whole bunch of stuff where you're saying it's hard. I mean, adversity can come against anybody and, and, and anything. But I'll tell you what, the best way to keep that devil from doing all that stuff against you is by exposing him in the word of God all the time. I know it's you, devil, and it's, it's like a good fighter. He, if you're hit, you're going to hit back harder, right? And let him know that you didn't drop. You didn't, you didn't drop your faith. You didn't drop your profession. You're holding on to your profession. That's why it's so important that we talk about it today, about holding on to our profession of faith, because it lets the devil know that whatever he tried, it did not work. Hallelujah. Some of you just by showing up in church today, you're letting the devil know that what he tried, it didn't work. Amen. You're singing that song in your spirit. Hit me with your best shot. Hallelujah. Fire away. I can take that shot. Don't go back to the world now. Come back. Come back to the house of the Lord. Quick look in the rear view for a good reason. Amen. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. You see, faith is the only thing that's really worth fighting for. Really, 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 when you come down to. According to the word of God, faith is the only thing worth risking whatever else you risk for. Amen. That's why 
That's why Paul told Timothy towards his last days, fight the good fight of faith. That's the fight. Don't stop fighting that fight. Every time the devil comes, you better hit him back. Every time the enemy is trying to steal, you better stop him. Every time this happens or that happens, you better know what he's after. And I'll tell you what, if you can hold on to your profession of faith, whatever the devil says he took, he will not be able to keep. Because the Lord is a restorer of everything. He even says, I will restore the years that the devil has stolen, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and all those wormy worm things that he used to play with. They stole all that time from your life. But I'm going to restore even the time you lost. That's in Joel, the Holy Spirit book. Paul would say, fight the good fight of faith. We're, we're talking about holding on, right? And what does he, what does he say? Lay hold. I mean, get a good grip. What's this message supposed to do? Supposed to help you get a good grip. Lay hold on eternal life. That means everlasting life. That means abundant life. That means a blessed life. That means a life that Jesus came to give you versus what the thief has come to do to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came, he said, to, that you may have life and that you may have it in abundance. And that is the part of eternal, unstoppable life of God in us. Amen. That the, that the word that is alive and active is constantly feeding in our lives. Amen. Fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life, for unto thou art also called, and hast before professed. Right? Hallelujah. Professed. A good profession before many witnesses. You see him telling them that? Hold on to your profession of faith. Hold on. You, you began by confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But the same way you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior... You come to time, you have to confess him as your healer. Amen? You have to confess him as the one that became poor so that you would be enriched. You, you, you have to confess him as the savior of your whole household. You have to confess him as a faithful one that never leaves you, never forsakes you. No matter what's coming against you, hold on to your profession of faith. And a profession of faith contains the whole word and the promises that Jesus activated. And we want to be in that activated faith in our lives. We are the ones, the beneficiaries of this product of faith in our lives. So let us hold fast. Let us hold fast, says Hebrews 10.23. Hold on real good. Hold on to what? Profession of faith. Without wavering. Because how many believe that the one that made those promises is faithful? He is faithful. He is faithful. Maybe we need to hear it again and again and again. Maybe we will have to say it. It's easy to say it here in church, but one day you have to say it in the face of the devil. Like they had to say it, you know, to Nebuchadnezzar and, and say the God that we serve, Mr. King, whether you decide to throw us in the furnace or not, the God that we serve, he's able to deliver us from that furnace. And out of that furnace and out of your hand, he will deliver us. And, and the King James says, but if not, know that we're going to go bow to your statue. But you know what? Some people say, and, and, and they incorrectly translate it, but if he doesn't deliver us. They did not say that. The question was of the threat of the, of the King Nebuchadnezzar, as to, he said, if you don't bow, I'm going to throw you in that furnace. Say, if it be so, you're going to throw us in the furnace. But hey, the God we serve, make, make, make it clear. Don't, don't be saying, well, if God doesn't help me, I'm still going to believe in it. No, my God don't help me, according to the word that I just read. According to the promise of what he bought from me. You know, so don't waver. It says, hold on to your profession of faith without wavering. Did you get that? Let's read it again. And that, that's Hebrews 10, 23, without wavering. That's why I'm emphasizing the not wavering. You understand? Because sometimes, you know, well-intentioned teachers add their own stuff. Even translators add their own stuff. And that's when you've got to take the whole scriptures where it says without wavering. Because he that wavers is like the one that's tossed to and fro in the ocean. Double-minded, right? 
But when you're up against a, a, the devil in a serious fight, you don't want to waver. The, this was serious. And, and they were saying, it's a question about whether you're going to throw us into the furnace or not. That's where the question was. You waver between those two. But they clearly say the God that we serve, he is able to deliver us. And out of your hand, he will deliver us, okay? And the but if not is, but if you don't throw us in, we're still not going to serve ni por la buena ni por la mala. Whether you try the soft way on us or you try the hard way on us, that's, what, that's really what they're saying. But we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow to your, to your statue. God is God. We believe that he is God. And your statue is not God. Your idol is not God. You know? Basketball doesn't have gods. <laughs> Football doesn't have gods. There is one God. Amen? He is my God. And I am his child. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. I get carried away. But it's, it's, it's a faith worth uh, fighting and dying for. Eventually we'll die for it. The Bible says if we live, we live for him. And if we die, you certainly don't want to die without it. Hold on to it. But you're just, you're just going to walk through the valley. You're not going to be crushed under, under the jaws of anything. You're going to walk through. Amen? And when the time comes, not, not before. When God's time comes. Hallelujah. So it's worth holding on to. It's worth fighting for. But you've got to understand that, that we're speaking on it. Are you all still all right? Because faith comes by hearing. And, and we're talking, uh, when we talk about the profession, we're talking about what comes out of our mouths also, you know. Like we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, I, I, I wish I could profess it for the whole world. They, they, they can't be saved un, unless they profess the name of Jesus. I can preach it to them, but they must profess the name of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Not in some cuss language. Amen? But as their Lord and Savior. And they must believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead personally. If they don't believe, it don't matter how many crackers and how much grape juice I give them. Amen? They got to receive Jesus Christ personally. Are y'all hearing this? But the Bible will tell you that no man can tame your profession of your mouth, your tongue. No man can tame. Therefore, it requires to let the word of God dwell in you richly. Watch this. James 3, 7, we read a little bit. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed, right? You ever see them? They tame even a whale to jump up and go to sea world. I said, my gosh. They can tame a big old monster like that, and it obeys man. Wow, lions, they're tame. Snakes, they're charmed, right? Well, the Bible says, yeah, all serpents, things of the sea, like Chamu, is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue, everything we're preaching about today, no man can do it. What? I thought I was just going to do it. I got, I got the message. One time we got the message. Amen? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therefore, therewith we bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth, Proceeded blessing and cursing, right? And then the key to this that I wanted to say is, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. It cannot be that way. Wait, 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 wait a minute, God. You said no man can tame it. Lord, you said no man can control it. You say it catches fire, the tongue keeps on talking, and the words keep on coming out. No man, no man, you said yourself. But the Lord also said, it ought not to be so. It's not the way it should be. Okay, so how are we going to fix it? 
Hmm. Well, he said in, in the third verse, watch how we fix it. Because a lot of us think this man is stronger than that man in faith and, and that one is more blessed of God than that one and God just gives the ability to one and not to the other. No, 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 no. Watch this, watch this. Get your mouth ready. Because it says, when we put bits, you know what a bit is? In a horse's mouth. To make them obey. Right? How does a horse obey? They put something in their mouth. You can go like that if you want to, to the word of God. Amen? Right here's where I need you, Lord. I need you right here. So I'm waiting on my blessing. Amen? Be a, be a good, strong, you're a stallion. Amen? You're not going to be one of those skinny horses that can barely move. You can, but you shouldn't. I'll tell you what, this is how you get to your blessing. This is how you stay on course. Because if you want a horse to stay on course, you put a bit in its mouth, it says there, to obey us. And we can turn the whole animal with that bit. With a tiny bit in the mouth, you turn the whole animal. Right? That's what it's saying. Or ships, for an example. You go on a cruise, you know, big giant hotel on water. 13 stories high. Four or 5,000 people on board. That whole thing has a rudder. And it turns a whole ship to go wherever you want it to go. That's what the Lord is saying. They are so large and they're driven by strong winds. And they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Right? Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. So, so you see, saying just the same way, the tongue seems like the most insignificant. Like you can say whatever you want to, and it's not going to make a difference, right? That's, that's what he's trying to tell you. But yet, it's going to steer your whole life. Just like it steers. Just like the big stallion. Just like the big chip. So the smallest member of your body, and what direction it talks, is going to steer the whole course of your life. It's a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. What you say out of your mouth can burn your whole life down. Amen. And you've seen it in natural ways. When you release a word, it's like a bullet. You can't put it back in the gun. You already shot somebody with it. Amen. You already done it. Well, that, that's the least of it. In the spirit, it sets the course of your life. If the devil is able to put a curse, remember with the same mouth you curse, and with the same mouth you bless, and the Lord said, mm-mm, it's not, gonna, it's not to be so. It's not going to work that way. But if the enemy, you see some people say, well, I'm not going to let the, that, that, that's too hard, the word of God always in my mouth, blah, blah, blah. Well, the devil's always putting a bit in people's mouth. And it's very, oh, entertaining, you know, uh, movies that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. They got cuss words in them that are so cheap. You can come up with something more original than that. You know, with all the hundreds of millions of dollars you spend to make the movie. You know? Because the devil is allowed to put things in their mouth so easily. And when, when you talk about God putting his bit, and this is the bit right here. This is the bit that fits and directs us to the fullness of the will of God. Are oh, you understanding? The blessing of God. And you know, you, you, it's a mess the way that people go around cursing the ground they walk on by the way that they speak. And I want to tell you, take it further than that, Christians don't cuss, but they can easily curse. Amen. They can easily say, oh, it always goes bad for me. Oh, I'm always broke. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling this. I think, I think I'm getting that. I, I heard about it on TV. Oh, look at this. It must be the monkey pox, you know? <laughs> You're just cursing the ground, and you don't even know it's the devil putting a bit in your mouth. Are y'all hearing this? And, and before you know it, you know, innocently, 
But the devil is not innocent. He comes to steal. And the way he's going to throw you off course and steal the blessings that God has prepared for you to come upon in your life is that he's got to put his bit in your mouth. But you better knock that bit out and you better take this bit in and install it in there permanently. Amen. And if, and if it's trying to be knocked loose by whatever the enemy is hitting you with, you better, you, you better come in and, and you better hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because no man can tame the tongue. But this is not the word of a man. Hallelujah. The word of God. Only God can tame your tongue. You got to fully admit it. I need the word of the Lord. Are you all following this? No man. You, you, you can try. Oh, you don't know how much I tried. And I always wind up. On, well, you, you just got to get the bit in there. Amen. You just got to get the word in your mouth. Amen. You just got to get the faith in there that cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. Every time that you're hearing the word of the Lord, that bit's been put on there for a good reason. So that the master, hallelujah, can take us forth into the blessings, into the promised land, into the land of all of his promises being fulfilled. Amen. Amen. But we're going to get there by holding on to the profession of our faith. That flows out of our mouth. Are y'all getting something out of this today? So you see. <clears throat> Colossians 3.16. Watch this because I'm coming close to the end. Let the word of Christ. Is it up there yet? Dwell in you how? When you're rich, when you're rich, do you have enough to survive? It's not about survival when you're rich. It's about having more than enough when you're rich. Right? When you're rich, <clears throat> you know, or, uh, when you're rich, you are overabounding. You are overflowing. So the instruction to how you tame the tongue with the word of God, do the things that no man can do, but let God do it, because here God is telling you how, is by letting the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly. Hallelujah. To where it's overflowing. Are you all hearing this? That's the way the bit stays in your mouth. You're letting the word of God do what no man can do. Are you all following this? The flesh is always going to lead you to, oh, instead of that, why don't you just get entertained? Why don't you just give it a break? You know what? When you're, when you're rich, how many know people that are rich are still working to get richer? Money-wise. Amen? And that's a waste of time. Because they already got enough of that. But in order to tame the tongue and therefore keep your course for the things that God has prepared for you, you got to do it God's way, and that is letting the word of God. Because if not, some other word is going to dwell in you. If it's rising up to you, if worry is rising up to your head, I'll tell you right now, it's because you're letting whatever the devil said through that problem dwell in you richly. Are y'all hearing this? When there's an issue, if you get up in the morning, the flesh, the first thing it wants to think is about that issue. Right? And that's a word of what the devil's doing, dwelling in you richly, okay? Just what it is. Go to bed at night, you're worried. Ask yourself, who's sending this worry? That issue, that giant, that mountain, that sick of mine tree. And I'm sick of mine now. So I'm going to believe God and go, I'm going to speak to it. Because the Lord, the, Lord, the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak unto this sick of mine tree. How many are sick of yours? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sick of my problem. Hey man, I ain't going go, go to let it stay there. The Lord said this. I mean, know the scripture. Yeah. That you can speak unto, speak unto the sycamine tree. The sycamine tree had deep roots too, you know. Deep as well as the branches were high. Right? 
So if you had not, oh no, this is for experienced Christians. No, this is for people that were neglectful for a long time, that it took deep roots, it came from your childhood, it came from whatever for a long time. He said, you can still have the power that if you use your faith to speak to that tree and be it, call it to be uprooted, tore out, cast into your sea. If they didn't give you cookies, if they didn't give you milk, if they never treated you as good as the other one, pull it out in the name of Jesus. Get rid of it. Because he said, if you got faith and you speak to that sick, are you sick enough of it? Unless you're not sick of it. I'm just playing with that word, but it is called a sycamine tree. Amen. Amen. And then be uprooted and be cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. And I understand we got legitimate problems and legitimate adversities and, you know, he doesn't know what happened to me. That's why God raised Joyce Myers. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if he knew what happened to her and still uses her that way, should I pray to God when I'm 78 years old, I'm able to preach uh, half as good as she does. She's like 78. She, she could be older than that because some ladies don't tell the truth about their age. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, man. But shoot, I admire that a whole lot. Amen. So, you let the word of God dwell in you. The answer is to get the right bit in the mouth of the stallion of God. Amen. 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 Uh, you, you let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Hallelujah. Teaching and admonishing one another. Hallelujah. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Amen. When we're singing, it's the word of God. Saturated, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Just, just let the word go. We're called to, to live in the word, right? We're called to, uh, uh, to live in the spirit. We're called to fulfill the life, you know, that, that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill. And, and Jesus said the spirit, it give, gives life. The flesh, it doesn't count for nothing. Amen. It just goes in and down the latrine or whatever. Amen. It says, that, now the words that I have spoken to you, the words that the Lord speaks to you, Amen. they are spirit, they are life. They, they are your life Amen. that God gives you. Amen. It's there. I know it fits every one of us in the right areas in our lives. It fits this preacher. I know it fits every member. Everyone that hears the word of the Lord, just let it go into that ground in your heart, your spirit, and your soul, and make a determination to retain it. Not just retain it, but add more word to it. Yeah. Add more word to it. Let it dwell in you richly. That means even when the flesh or the circumstance says, oh, well, you don't really need it today. Oh, yeah. Well, you better, you better take it in. Amen. Yeah. Because he didn't say just let the word that you need. Just go select it. And take it. No, those are people that have itchy ears and go about looking for teachers according to what they want to, right? But to dwell in you richly means you have the word you need and the word you may need and the word somebody else may need and, uh, and, and the word that applies to your circumstance at the time. But you delight yourself, hallelujah, because that word has worked for you before and you retain it and you hold on to the profession of your faith. And you're overflowing because you're letting the word of God dwell in you richly. That's a way that the tongue is going to be tamed. Because if it's not dwelling in you richly, before you know it, the tongue's going to go out of control. The, the, the things that you're going to be speaking are going to have doubt. They're going to have fear. They're going to have unbelief. They're going to have curse instead of bless. Amen. But I'd rather go around blessing the ground that I walk on. If the world can go around cursing the ground, I go around blessing the ground that I walk on. Amen? No matter what. I believe that if I delight in the Lord, the Bible says that he's going to give us the desires of our heart. Amen? Plus, if we delight in the Lord, like Caleb said, if the Lord delights in us, hallelujah, he will give us that land full of his promises flowing with milk and honey. Look at this cluster of grapes. It was, 
It was too heavy for one man. We needed two men and a big stick to carry it here to show you. Look at my life, what the Lord has done. Look at your life, where the Lord brought you from. Amen. And let it be the evidence, hallelujah. And let it make a determination in your heart and in your life that you're going to walk with God Amen. the rest of your life. If the devil comes threatening, I've been telling people lately because, yeah, you know, when the devil comes messing and, 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 and God's going to be blessing. And sometimes when God is blessing, the devil also comes messing. Amen? Amen. Vice versa. Yeah. But don't, 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 be, don't be thrown off track. Stay on course. Amen. And how are you going to stay on course? By putting his bit, your, your, the word of God, in your mouth. Yeah. And, and speaking it in prayers, speaking it in songs, hymns, praises. Yeah, it all helps. Amen. And, and out there, may the Lord, you know, keep that bit in your mouth. Because they, uh, you are the workmanship of God. And there, there are things prepared for you out there for you to walk into. That will bless your life. That will prosper your life. That, that will just save those around you. Hallelujah. They've already been prepared. And if you call in there, you know, the doctor calls you in there. I tell people, go spy the land. It don't, it don't hurt to spy the land. But if, 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 if the finances go this way or that way, go, go ahead and evaluate them. Go ahead and, 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 and spy the land. Amen. If, if, if this over here, you know, uh, alarms you or whatever, go ahead and go spy the land. But go like Joshua and Caleb. Don't go like the other ten. Because Joshua and Caleb... They went in to spy the land, but they had the promises in their hand. Hallelujah. They went in there like the three Hebrew children that said, whether the giants are there, whether the furnace is there, whether whatever is there, I know the God that I serve has delivered me before. Hallelujah. I know he can deliver me, and I know that he will deliver me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm going to hear what the doctor has to say or, or, or what the expert has to say. I'm going to take their knowledge. I mean, they're there for a reason and all that. But I'm going in there to spy the land with the promises of God in hand. It's not going to have the last say. It's not going to have the ultimate declaration. It's a word of God that's going to speak in my heart. It's going to speak in my mouth. It's going to speak in my faith. It's going to speak in my praise. Amen. It's going to speak in my steps. It's going to keep me on course. Hallelujah. I know this may take me for a surprise, but God is not surprised, and I am not my own. I am, hallelujah, a sheep of his fold, and the good shepherd, he takes care of his sheep, hallelujah. If I'm one of his sheep, I can say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I'm not going to lack a single thing, hallelujah. He's going to lead me besides the still waters, calm waters. He's going to lead me through the paths of his righteousness because of his name's sake. Because of who he is. Can you all stand up in the house of the Lord? He's going to lead me. Hallelujah. I'm taking that, that, I'm taking that word. That's a bit in my mouth right now. I tell you what, the spirit of the Lord is in, installing it right now. Hallelujah. That's like the steering wheel from heaven. But it, it, it don't come on you forcefully. It comes on you when you surrender and yield it to the Lord. Casting all your cares upon the Lord. Because you know that he cares for you. Are you all getting this today? Hallelujah. We'll go spy the land. We'll go spy the land. But with the promises of God in our hand. Hallelujah. Because when we do that, we're going to have the victory. Hallelujah. Before we even enter the battle. The victory's already been won by Jesus. Hold on to the name of Jesus. He already went. A shepherd would never send his sheep where he hadn't gone before. Are y'all hearing this? The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's been there. He knows what I was going to encounter. I'm just following him. I'm just making sure I follow him. Because a shepherd will go over there and check under the stones and, and, and he will check the, the weeds and the pastures and everything out there. Amen. So I'm just going to follow my shepherd. That's why I'm not going to lack because he's already gone there and he's prepared the ground. He's already fixed it about where we're going to stay at night. Amen. 
And I'll tell you what, they had this, this stone uh, corrals out there in the middle of nowhere that, that, that they would have to travel far because the grace land would extend further out there. And they'd go out there, and at night they would have to stay. They couldn't come back to the barn or the ranch. They just had to stay out there. But the shepherd would gather all the flock, you know, because you're not your own. You're a sheep of his flock. And he gathers you in there when darkness is, uh, is approaching. Amen. But, you know, there wasn't no wood around there, so there wasn't, there were just the stones and the hedges, and the sheep would go in there. But there was no door on the hedge, so the shepherd himself, he would lay at the door. Amen. He would be the door. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door of the sheep. Amen. And the good shepherd, he says, he lays down his life. Yes, yes. He's laid down his life already Amen. for your well-being. He's laid down his life right there to be the door right there. That if the wolf would come at night, the shepherd was saying, he has to come through me. I'm the first flesh that he's going to encounter here. He can't get to my sheep right. unless he goes through through me. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Because the good shepherd, he lays down his life. He laid down his life for you and I. That's why we're here today. The profession of our faith tells the enemy when we go out that we came to take what the Lord already conquered for us. Are y'all hearing this? If you got enough faith to let it come out of your mouth, let it come out of your mouth because the Lord already conquered for you. Right there, right there, install that at the root. Download that, download that. What is it, finances? Finances, amen. So you install the fact that he that was rich came down and became poor. So that in that poverty that he came to endure, I would be enriched. Hallelujah. He already did it. He's not saying, I'm going to do it. But the word of God says he already did it. Yes. Right now in the name of Jesus, and if you need a healing for your body, you know, I'm going to claim it with you. Not because, not because it's something new, but the Bible says that he already bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases, and by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. The profession of my faith declares that he's already done it. I just come to claim what he already purchased for me. And that's why the, what the profession of my faith is saying. Do you get that? Do you get that? Do you get that? He died for the sins of the world. That means he died for my family. That means he died for my children. That means he died for my grandchildren. I just come to claim by the promise of God that if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, my whole household shall be saved. I just claim what he already conquered. I'm not claiming it on my merits. I'm claiming it by grace. I'm drawing near. Anybody want to draw near to the throne of grace? Hallelujah. I invite you for a moment just to worship the Lord, whether at this altar or where you're at. It, it don't matter. But I tell you today, that we accept the invitation because of the word that's alive and powerful and dwelling in us. Dwelling in us because of what he's saying right now because he has compassion on our weaknesses he has mercies for our weaknesses he was tested in every way yet without sin because he conquered he conquered for us In the name of Jesus, we claim what you already 
spot, Lord. Help, healing, recovery, restoration. We claim it in the name of Jesus. From the crown of His head to the soul of His feet. Flow, heal. And the truth to every dark of your word starts to break. Where by the stripes of Jesus, you can heal. More rabbis at the rabbis, cut the bones. Come in right now. The depth of this spirit and this soul divide asunder. Cast down every fear, every doubt, every condemnation. Cast it down. They're healing deeper than the flesh going on. Deeper. It's deeper. It's deeper. That's what our flesh can feel right now. Give it all to the Lord. Give it all to the Lord. Give it all to God. Oh, Rabasa, Tabakata, Rabasa. Oh, Rabasa, Tabakata, Rabasa. Already been bought, already been paid. Already claim it. Claim it. Claim it. Jesus Christ. For recovery. Your name is mine. Your name is mine. Your name is mine. And yet it's strong.
Tell every enemy I'm here to claim what has belonged to me. Just like when I got saved, salvation had been waiting for me for 2,000 years. I'd been forgiven. But when I showed up to claim it, in delay, it came that instant. So much more. That was only the beginning. That was only the beginning. The enemy tried to say, okay, 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 you got enough. I went and read. I went and heard. I heard the Spirit of God speak. Speak to the church that I was part of. The Lord was saying, I have much more. I have much more. That's what he's saying to us. But you got to speak. You got to claim. You got to believe it. You got to hold on to that promise. I brought you out of Egypt. But not to the desert but through the desert right through it you may find yourself in a valley but it's only a space between the high places that you're going to elevate in right now even if you walk through the valley fear not fear not the Lord your God, He is with you. His rod right now, His rod and His staff, they infuse that strength, that faith, that comfort. It don't matter what you're going through. It matters who you're following. It matters what you're believing. Your faith going to take you forth. Your faith is working. It's operating. It's active. It's active. It's active. Right now. Not by your strength, but by the Word of God that's dwelling in you richly. It's filling you up. It's filling you up. It's the Word of faith that we preach. That if you declare and confess a thing, it's like salvation. As you declare and confess it, you're saved. You're also delivered. You're also blessed. You're also prospered. You're also healed. You're also set free from your fear. If you will believe in your heart, you will confess with your mouth. You will hold on to that profession. The Lord going to bring it to pass. He's going to bring it to pass. Cast not away your confidence. Cast not away your faith because it has a great recompense of reward. Cast not away your profession because faithful is the one that promised. Receive that promise. Receive that word from the Lord and He is faithful. He will bring it the past. He will make it happen. And you will see the glory full of grace, full of truth. You'll see that glory from a
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we let the word of the Lord and what he has to say about your life and mine. Dejando la palabra de Dios que more ricamente. Va a ser una diferencia que sobrepasa tu aflicción o tu necesidad, que aunque todos las tenemos, pero cuando la palabra mora como el fundamento de Dios, como el guía de Dios, el timón de Dios en nuestras vidas, por medio de nuestra profesión, entonces el enemigo no va a tener defensa. Remember what Caleb said, says, their defense has departed from them. Su defensa se ha apartado de ellos. Ustedes están mirando los muros. Esos muros no tienen defensa para Dios. Ustedes miran cadenas. Sus hermanos. Esas cadenas no tienen defensa para Dios para Dios que te habla there is no limit to the God that speaks his word into your life and there's going to be a difference watch the fine line it's not going to be so much because you have a need that brings you to your knees that has its purpose but it's going to be because the word of his promise dwells in you and the audacity of the spirit of faith in you is going to say the Lord already bought it. The Lord already conquered it. The Lord already carried it on the cross. The Lord already conquered. I'm here. I'm here. Because I've been sent of the Lord to claim what I need. I'm a chief of his foe already provided for my needs but I want you to see the difference let your need make you cry out to the Lord but as a profession of your faith in God comes out of your prayer life comes out of your praise comes out of your faith you're going to be claiming it based on the right foundation that it's already done you're going to enter the battle with your victory already in hand. You're going to tell the devil to his face, you are defeated. The devil is defeated. Right now. Right now, God's blessing is yours. Totally. Right now, right now, right now. You can stand on that word. It's yours. Right now. It's yours already. It's yours already. Oh, brother, but why does it take a while? Because people have their own free will. You know, now watch this. I don't want it to be a negative note that I end on. But just so you can, all, there's a word for everything. Why is it taking a while? Well, you know what? It took a while for Caleb and Joshua to receive. But they should have got that day. A while, like 40 years? Wow. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it was because of the other people he had to tolerate and have great patience and have great mercy with. So the Lord is having great patience. He's having great mercy with so many. He's waiting. You're not the only one waiting. He's waiting there with you for so many things because he don't want anyone to perish, but all of them to proceed to repentance that's just for salvation. But when there's a waiting process like there was for Caleb, they waited 40 years with a generation out there. Then God could have just wiped them out that day, but he is so good that he endured them for 40 years. He fed them. He watered them. Kept the enemies from killing them. All of that, even to the rebellious ones, right? The good examples of a bad example, which we don't want to be. Are you all hearing this? But I'm just telling you this because when you think it's taking a while, 
But for one thing, you got to remember how long you gave the devil to destroy you. And by the grace of God, because he was patient with you like he's been patient with so many other things. You know you made it here, right? But I'll tell you what, when Caleb, 40 years, he was already 80 years old. But the Bible says that his strength was still the same. At 80, it was still the same as it was at 40. And the promises, they were still there. And the profession of his faith, it was still there. And he said, 40 years ago, Moses told me to go take that mountain where those giants are. And I want that mountain. If you're going to give me something, Joshua, which by the way was there, and he was now the captain. He was now the leader. And his strength, I know, was the same. You see what God does? You see what God does? He is a good God. You don't understand times, and you don't understand seasons, but God does. And they're all in his hands. They're all in his hands. You just keep on professing. And it's going to, in due season, you're going to have what God promised you. Because you held on to the promise. And I happen to believe that if you have to wait longer, the blessing even gets bigger. It even gets greater. Hallelujah. I thank God. I don't encourage anybody to waste the years of your youth like I did. But even that, the Lord used for good. And I thank him. How many thank him tonight? Today. Amen. I almost feel like I'm preaching to the night. Now we're going to we're gonna pick up the offering. If we may, I know. We took a few minutes. But I want chains to break. I want walls to fall. I want blessings to spring forth. And it's going to be because the word of God dwells in you richly. Richly, richly. Remember that word richly, what it means. It means more than enough. It means overflowing. It means springing forth. It means running over. That's the way you tame what needs to be tamed in your life and mine. Father, we just thank you for today's offering. Lord, we thank you because you promised that where we plant, we're going to reap. Thank you, Lord, for all that have planted and are reaping now and will reap in the future and will reap eternally, Father God. Thank you for the seed of your word, but also, Lord, seed of faith that is an element in every act of giving today, Father. I pray would be blessed by you. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless every tithe, the tithe of the tithers of this church bring forth a blessing for them for their children like it did for Abraham and Isaac and their grandchildren like it did for Jacob that the blessing was still there and like it did for the generations on down the line let that blessing be released by the tithing and the giving of your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. God's people can say, Amen.